Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be reviewing something that's a little bit different to the usual stuff that I review but this channel is called Man Discovers Tech. So basically that means anything tech related that I discover I'm going to make a review about and tell you about my experience with that tech item. So this is one of the things that I've come across in the recent year and I've tested it probably for now for the last four months or five months and yeah what it's called is a shaper right this is the shaper that's what the s is for in the middle there okay and what is it it's, a, it's actually a weighing scale it's a weighing scale that has one very unique feature oops one very unique feature and that is there is no window there that tells you how much you actually weigh so what's the point of that right well, I'm gonna tell you the point of that now. What it tells you, right, first of all, what you need to do, you need to get an app for it, okay? You need an app, but this weighing scale does not work without the app, okay? It actually tells you your weight in basically different uh, colors, right? So you have green, teal, blue, and gray. That's all the information you know about your weight. It also measures your body composition. So using these electrodes, you might see these electrodes here. This is not something new on a weighing scale. There's loads of weighing scales like that. It's trying to make a overall judgment about basically your body's condition, taking into account your weight and the data that they get from the electrodes. The goal here is not to try and make you slim Jim. The goal here is to try and change your psychology about what it means to be a healthy person. And I agree with that because a lot of people today, they're very, very concerned about numbers. So people want to be have, you know, the, the car with the best horsepower or the most horsepower, or the people are concerned about, you know, how in, in, in this case, it's how much do you weigh? Everyone wants to weigh a certain amount, you know, lower the better or whatever. What's your body fat percentage? So oh, I want to be under 10% body fat. You know, in the gym, how much do you bench? How much do you squat? You know, it's all numbers based. And what it means is that a lot of people can feel, I mean, the majority of people, because there can only be a small percentage of exceptional people. So the majority of pe uh, people feel like they're underachievers, that they're not actually doing, they're not actually achieving anything in life, right? So my question to you is, are you sick and tired of chasing numbers? Do you want a healthy body, a healthy mind and healthy spirit? If you're answering yes to those questions, then I would say that this is something that you should stick around for for the rest of this review because I'm going to tell you pretty much everything I know about it. I can understand the point of the scale, okay, because it's not playing by the same rules as the other industries like the fitness industry and the weight loss industry, which I think is, is scary that how these other industries are getting away with it. One example was uh, years ago I went to a diet club, right? And they're trying to promote very good eating and, you know, being healthy and all that. But one of the one of the weeks I went there, I never went back after this, there was a lady and uh, she said that week, at the beginning of the session, everyone weighs themselves and uh, everyone tells everyone about how much weight they lost this week. There was this one lady, she was sitting right next to me and uh, her weight had gone up and it had gone up by half a pound, right? Half a pound here. So that's what, 227 grams, half a pound, I believe, is how much she put on in a week. And the person that was leading that meeting put her on the spot and said, why did you put weight on this week? Tell us what you did wrong, right? And take, it, and take into account that this was near Christmas, it was December, when people are gaining weight, people are eating more. You know, it's part of the culture. And this woman was there in the spotlight getting blamed for why she put a half a pound on. Now th from, uh, from that moment onward, I, ne I never actually went back to that club. So, um, but it's that sort of mentality where I think that something like this is very powerful. It's something I think that is, is gonna help a lot of people or something like this, because it's not perfect. Stick around and understand why. I'll tell you the reason why. It's not the longest of videos, but it'll, it's gonna take me a bit of time to explain. How does it work? Let me explain how it works first, okay? It's very simple. 
that's one thing I can say. It's very simple to sign up. It's like signing up for any account that you've ever signed up for online. It's a monthly subscription model, or you could pay it if you wanted to. You can pay for a yearly membership. That's another option. Okay, in my case, they had an offer on. They said, if you pay for the whole year upfront, we'll send you the weighing scale for free. I believe the weighing scale is like $100 or so. It comes from America, by the way. If you don't live in America, you've got to check if these guys will send it to you. But I believe the weighing scale was like $100 and the membership was like $100 or something. So it made out like you're going to get it free. Okay. You need to enter quite a lot of information about yourself when you sign up. There's a questionnaire that comes out and it basically ask you so many questions about you know what your lifestyle is like and what you like with this and what you like with that what what are the problems you have and all this sort of stuff you have to sign up to see uh, for yourself right but the reason that they're doing that is because they are using an algorithm right AI essentially they're using a smart algorithm that is trying to take this data about you and figure out what is wrong not is wrong what is wrong with you sorry what is what are your triggers and trying to put into into a uh, place changes that can help you get rid of those triggers or avoid those triggers and lead you down a healthy path. That's what it's trying to do. So when you get your scale, when you actually get this in the post, right, it comes in quite a nice box. The first thing you need to do is connect it to a phone, a smartphone or a, a tablet. You could also connect it to a tablet too. You then load up the app on your phone and it's as simple as load up the app, it's connected by Bluetooth now, and just step on the scale, and that's it. You step on the scale, the scale then communicates with the phone, with your app, and then your app tells you when to get off the scale once it's done its measurement. Once it's done that, it gives you a color, which I explained earlier on. You get a different uh, range of colors. You get green, teal, blue, and the grays as well. So let me explain what that means. So you have green, which means you are maintaining weight. That This scale makes you feel good about maintaining weight because green is a color that's associated with good things, okay? So that's something I noticed. The next one is teal. So it's in between green and blue. And teal means that you are losing a bit of weight. It doesn't tell you how much weight you're actually losing. It just tells you that it's teal. So you could be losing 100 grams a week, you know, a few ounces a week, it doesn't matter. If you're losing, you're losing, okay? Then you have blue, and blue means you're losing weight at a faster pace, like at a good pace. And again, I don't know how much blue is. It could be one pound, could be two pound, could be three pound. I don't know what it is. The point is that the rate of weight loss is, uh, is a good one. It might not even be weight loss. It could be your body composition has changed for the better. That's another thing. It doesn't always have to be weight loss because remember this scale is using these electrodes to figure out more about you. And if you put on muscle, let's say, but don't lose any weight, your, your body composition is still better. So I think you might get a blue for something like that. The next colors or shades that we have is uh, gray. And gray means you're gaining weight. Or you, something's wrong, basically. You, something's not going to plan. You have light gray and you have dark gray. Light means you're putting on weight slowly and dark means you're putting on weight at a faster pace. So basically, you don't want to have gray days. Gray days aren't good. You want green days, teal days, or blue days. Okay, but green is probably the best because once you get to your goal weight, or once you're happy, you wanna be green. Now, when you start this process, right, or program, it's a program, I feel like. It's not really like anything else. It really feels like a program. You will have a 10 day initiation period. And that means the scale or the app it, the algorithm is wanting to know a bit more about you and your body. How does your body change over time? For the first 10 days, you will need to weigh yourself two times, one in the morning, one in the evening before bed. And you can't do it in less days. You can't, you know, do a shortcut and do it in five days, let's say. The algorithm needs 10 solid days to understand your body's average. What makes this scale different is that it's never telling you what you're weighing now. Okay, that's the, that's the point. The algorithm is, is taking all this data, it's trying to find an average standing of your body's composition and its weight, and uh, basically to give you a more accurate number, an, an accurate P 
piece of information about yourself. It's not a number, it's a color. But that's what it's doing. So why is that important? Well, it's important because, you know, you might have had, let's say, you might have gone out for fast food a few days ago, right? You might have had a bad day. And if it were a normal scale, you would get onto the scale the next day, you'd look at the scale and it would say, ah, oh, you've put weight on. And then you'd feel bad about yourself, okay? But this scale takes into account days upon days upon days of average weight. So if you had one naughty day, it doesn't mean that the color is gonna be go from going from green to gray. It's likely gonna stay green and that will make you feel good about yourself and that will keep you on track. That's the point. It doesn't punish you for minor lapses in judgment, which is a human thing. Every human being is gonna make mistakes every now and again. And sometimes people just need to have a bit of fun so they can move on with life and progress. You can't be perfect all the time. Your brain won't allow it, right? But now I'm gonna go on to the section about why I think the scale is good. First of all, I think the design, okay? I think that's an interesting looking scale. It's not like other scales. You know, it's uh, I like the marble effect. It's not real marble, it's plastic. But I think it's a refreshing thing to look at in the morning. It's not like a display that's looking back at you that's uh, scaring you away. The next thing I think that's good about it is it makes you feel good about yourself. It gives you confidence. So when you get your green in the morning, it gives you a little message to say, you know, in green or something like that. You know, you're doing very well, blah, blah, blah. You know, and uh, yeah, just like I said earlier, just because you slip up every now and again, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. The scale focuses on your average body weight your bo and your average body composition. So it doesn't tell you off for being a human. The other great thing I think is if you have scale anxiety, that's it, it's gonna help you, okay? If it helps you overcome your scale anxiety. Now, what is scale anxiety? It's a feeling, right, and I, I suffer from this uh, crazy like crazy amount right it's a feeling that you can't weigh yourself because the result isn't going to be something that you want to see so sometimes it could be you had something bad last night and then you don't want to weigh yourself because you say oh i'll tell you what i'll be good today and i'll weigh myself tomorrow or the next day and he never does this never happens and then you can go three months without weighing yourself and that's the worst thing possible uh, for you is to not weigh yourself so that's the first thing and another thing is sometimes people are on a diet they're doing very well they starve themselves all week and the scale doesn't move and it doesn't mean that it's not gonna move it could move but you might wait another week and then it goes down you see so some people can get very impatient and I fall into that category too when I work very hard all week I want to see that sc that scale move down if it doesn't move down I feel I'm doing something bad even though I'm not Okay, and that puts people off weighing themselves. Scale anxiety is very, very important to overcome. Uh, that's what I've learned over the time uh, that I've been doing this, not just this scale, but throughout life, you gotta get over scale anxiety. You need to know more about your body. You know, I think people need to know more about the body and the things that matter about your body, not just a number. And uh, to do that, to be able to learn more about yourself, you need a mechanism in place that allows you to weigh yourself and get what you need to make progress and you need it, to, that's at the same time, you need it to keep you motivated as well. So yeah, I think this scale does that. It does do that, okay? It keeps you motivated and it keeps you weighing yourself. At the moment, I think, and trust me, right, I'm not being paid by anyone to do this video. My channel isn't big enough yet to uh, be paid for anything. I'm giving you 100% honest opinions and my experience here. I've weighed myself for over 120 days now, and that's, what's that four months I have never in my whole life I can promise you now I've never ever in my whole life weighed myself for that many days in a row in my whole life and I think that is a huge positive like the fact that I've done that and I'm, I've got a streak I've got over 120 days as a streak you know for me that's the game changer I feel like almost like a different person just for that so yeah it's, it's, it has worked. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a perfect system, okay? There are things that are a bit wrong, and I'm gonna tell you those now. The first thing is, if you, go, if you go into the app, the app will give you some challenges, right? It's trying to give you daily challenges to keep you, the idea of it is trying to keep you loading up the app, keep you looking at the app. And if the, the idea is, if you look at it, it's like reminding yourself that you are trying to change yourself. 
because it's when you try to avoid these things that you fall into a trap and you start becoming the person you don't want to be so if you load up the app you look at the challenge it trying to get you to do a little challenge and it's keeping you in the zone basically now i think that it's a good concept but in theory it, sorry in reality there are many problems with it now first of all the stuff that it recommends you it's not always possible it's not always possible to do so i'll give you an example one challenge that i had was to find a place that has a constant incline and walk up it for x amount of minutes i think it was 10 minutes or 20 minutes i think it was 20 minutes something like that and uh, yeah my question is what about if you don't live near any hills where am i going to find a place that's got that that you know that's got that will help me fulfill that challenge so sometimes the challenges they're a bit annoying that's what i'm trying to say another challenge right it was telling me to stay away from certain foods like try not to eat sugar for one day or something like that uh, and i think another challenge was uh we recommend you eat one portion of fish today well i do my shopping online what about if i didn't put fish in the order have i got to go out and purposely buy fish just for this challenge i can feel good about myself do you see what i mean so i think the challenge is it's a good concept but they can be a bit annoying um if you you can complete them if you want to but i didn't when i completed mine i completed mine a few times i didn't feel any better for it i just felt yeah i completed the challenge whoop whoop but you know at the same time if you fail a challenge so if you start a challenge the app gives you like 24 hours to complete it if you fail it you feel bad so yeah for me the challenges don't motivate me at all i think it's something that needs work or just get rid of it the other thing is the scale itself it can take a very long time for it to give you a reading now sometimes i've actually stepped on it and it takes 60 seconds sometimes two minutes to actually get a reading i don't know why that is but it's saying it's calculating and the thing is going like that i'm waiting and i'm waiting and waiting i'm desperate to get off this scale and it just keeps me on it and sometimes it fails and i've got to do it again another annoying thing is you have to be barefoot and why do you have to be barefoot because of these electrodes if you wear socks you won't be able to wear yourself on this okay and i think it should be an option what about if i want to wear socks the point is i i think that the scale is trying to get information out of you it's trying to get your body composition your uh, your stats it's trying to send pulses through your feet to try and figure out what your fat mass is and all that sort of stuff now personally i think there is a bit of a there is a kind of a benefit of that but i'm overweight okay i know for a fact if i lose weight if i lose 20 pounds now most of that 20 pounds is going to be fat i guarantee it it's not going to be muscle it might be a pound or two pounds of muscle i'm not going to lose 20 pounds of muscle if i go on a diet because i'm overweight my body literally wants me or my body it's good for my body to get rid of that fat so that's the thing i know that um about myself i don't need those electrodes i don't need you to tell me about my body composition i just need you to monitor my weight you know what about if you get up in the morning what about if you like to wear socks in bed you get up in the morning what you have to take your socks off weigh yourself and then put your socks back on i see a lot of problems about for people not really big problems but it's just a bit annoying that's all and the other thing is working out your weight with electrodes is not even accurate everyone knows this in the fitness industry you know that people have to go use special machines like dexa scans and stuff like that to try and get half a, half an accurate measurement of their body composition so why do you think you can get it done with an electrode so i think yeah it's pretty pretty pointless my recommendation just let people wear them uh, weigh themselves with socks please uh, forget the go uh, body composition altogether just take weight measurements or at least give people the option to turn it off um yeah just nail the basics basically shaper if you're watching this um and yeah i mean body composition can't you look in a mirror a mirror will tell you if you're if you're good enough or bad enough or if you put muscle on or not a mirror is is better now another problem right and this is a big one listen up for this one okay it's very very annoying very very annoying i recently started the insanity program i don't know if you heard of it but it's one of the hardest workouts ever put on the, onto dvd onto or video and i'm doing this exercise uh, regimen i've been doing it for a while now maybe about a month or so and i'm killing myself doing this right it's, it's good i like it 
but I'm blatantly losing weight. I know I'm losing weight. My clothes feel looser. People are telling me that I'm, I'm looking better. And uh, yeah, that's the point. The funny thing is this scale, right? This little thing here is telling me for the first 10 days, I'm doing insanity, right? I'm doing insanity now. Just think about it. I'm doing insanity for 10 days. I'm eating better and everything. The scale is telling me you're putting weight on. The first 10 days, my color was like gray, dark gray, light gray. And I have to say that was really pissing me off at the time because I'm thinking, look, I'm doing, I'm doing uh, all this hard work. I'm putting in all this hard work and you're not telling me that I'm doing well, right? Why are you saying, telling me it's great? It might have been something I did a few weeks ago. I don't know. But why are you telling me I'm great when I'm blatantly doing a good job, right? And it took about 15 days for the scale to turn blue. It did turn blue. So I was right. I knew that what I was doing was the right thing. It took about 15 days, 16 days to turn, eventually turn to green and then blue, right? And then when it turned blue, I was like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew this thing was bullshitting me basically. Um, and you know, I have to say it was dangerous because by day seven, day eight, and I'm still getting grays, I was starting to doubt myself a bit. I'm thinking maybe I should quit insanity. Maybe I should quit doing this exercise because it's not working. I thought there was something wrong with me genetically. I thought maybe I just not cut out to lose weight. And for me, that's concerning. I think I, I think a lot of people would have given up. I think I, because I knew about how the scale was working it out, I was thinking to myself, it must be something I did two weeks ago. I must have done something that made my weight go up. And now it's punishing me for that, but it's just two weeks delayed, right? That needs work. Another thing that I think needs a bit of work is the app for the tablet, okay? So it has an app, right, for phones, which is fine. But when you use it on a tablet, which I do, I have an Android tablet, right? The text is all bunched up and it doesn't look right and you, you can't really read what's going on. You kind of get half lines of text. So I think that they haven't optimized the app for tablet users. And um, yeah, like I said, I find it better on a tablet because I load it up on the tablet. The tablet sits on my bedside table. I get up in the morning, turn the tablet on, get on the weighing scale, it's done, right? And that brings me to my next point. Why do you think they're trying to make the tablet experience so bad and why is it much better on the phone and there's a reason I think it's because your phone is following you around all day it's in your pocket right so what data do you think that this company shaper what are they collecting about you they're collecting your location data their how maybe how many steps you're doing in a day I don't know there's so many things that they're probably calculating uh, and collecting so um, yeah, they're using that data to make better predictions about you and they need you to take that phone around with you. So um, yeah, the question is, how are they using the data? And this is my next point. How are they using it, right? And I've taken the time to look up their patent, right? I'm a bit crazy, but I, take, I took the time to look up their patent. And some of the data, right? Their patent, I think, is an algorithm, right? So, and some of the data that they collect about you is written in the patent and uh, what the algorithm does to it, well, with it, is quite alarming like you feel like you're being watched right and uh, I'm gonna put a snippet of that for you on the screen now I'll leave the patent uh, down in the comments if you want or in the description and you can go and see it uh, just so you know well, you're happy with what this thing is actually learning about you hmm and fitness management system that employs an algorithm to determine suggested recommended actions for a user to improve their health and fitness in one aspect of the present invention, the system collects the following information, the individual's current age, the individual's ideal age, the individual's starting or initial weight, individual's current weight, individual's ideal weight. In yet another aspect, the system can determine travel and activity history through social media activities. In yet another aspect, the system can obtain information pertaining to an individual's daily routines, including sleeping habits, including sleeping habits, when the individual bathes, when the individual brushes their teeth, work hours and the like. When I bathe and brush my teeth, are you kidding me? And the reason I'm a bit concerned about it is because 
In this day and age, there's, a, there's an information problem. You know, we wanna know more about how companies are using our data. And it's not just companies like Facebook and Google that we need to be concerned about. In fact, it's the smaller companies as well that I would be con concerned about because the question is, who are they reporting to? Who is regulating them and who's shining the spotlight on them? If there's a, if, if someone hacks into to their computers and, and take all, all your data away, who, who is keeping these people accountable? I haven't seen a, a switch, a very obvious switch, where you can turn off data collection. I don't want them to take data away for, about how, maybe, what, what is it that they're learning about me? I don't want that stuff to be monitored. I just want you to look at the weight. I don't need body fat composition and how I walk and all that stuff. I don't want that to be public knowledge or your knowledge. Next point, it's a subscription model. Okay, now subscription models, everyone knows the reason why people try to get you into a subscription model is because they can get more money out of you. Because no matter how many times you pay monthly, you never own the product, you never own it. It's like Netflix, like you, you, it seems cheap when you're paying like eight pound a month or something or 10 pound a month for Netflix, but f don't forget, like you, ne you, all the films you watch, you never own it. So if you ever left Netflix, you, you can never take those films with you. You have to go back to Netflix and hope they've got it. I can see a lot of people using this scale being becoming dependent on it, uh, which means over time they're paying monthly subscription payments, they're gonna be spending more. Um, and then at the same time, the, the algorithm itself, why could you not just put the algorithm into the scale and not put it on the phone? And that way you could sell people one product, you pay once, the algorithm's on the scale, and that's it. You just pay once. Yeah, I don't need it to be monthly updated and stuff, right? So, and it just got me thinking, so what about if I'm with Shaper for three years? To so say I do a three year membership, and I decide after three years to cancel. So now, essentially, this weighing scale is useless. Now it's useless, because you need the app to use the scale. So sort it out, I think. I think offer people, away out of the subscription model because it's a good idea that you've got it's a good idea here but you know i think charging people for 20 years or whatever it is and then becoming dependent is not something that's healthy as well another downside right sorry i'm going on a bit of a rant today but like i said no one pays me so i'm 100 percent honest the company seem to contradict themselves now when you sign up they put you on a mailing list and they send you emails, like it's not all the time, it might be once a week or once a month or something like that, it's not crazy, right? But the emails that I've noticed, it says stuff like, like, look at Diana, she lost 25 pounds using her shape of scale. Now, don't you think that's a little bit contradictory when you're selling a numberless scale? The whole point is that the scale doesn't tell you about how much weight you lost, it doesn't tell you about what your weight is, it doesn't tell you about that. And the point is, in your ethos, it's about people not focusing on how much they weigh anymore. But then in your monthly emails, you're saying, oh, look at so-and-so, she did really well, she lost 25 pounds. So we know from life, from, from the experience of life, that a lot of the time people lose weight, they put it back on. So are you gonna tell us when Diana puts her weight back on? Obviously you're not gonna do it. I know it's a business, but it's contradicting the message. The message is, put your data into the scale, let the scale tell you with colors how good things are going. Why are you concentrating on how much weight someone lost? To me, that's a massive contradiction. And um, I mean, in, in your own words, Diana shouldn't even know her weight. She should know her color. So which one do you want, color or weight loss? Which one do you want? So uh, that's why I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, that's kind of bad, I think. Now, question is, why did I buy it? Okay, why did I end up buying this scale? And I'll give you one word, lockdown. That's the reason why. The lockdown happened uh, in early 2020 and uh, I gained a lot of weight during lockdown, a lot of weight. My environment changed, everything changed. You know, my brain, my mental health was going crazy bad, you know, and uh, when these things happen, it's a trigger and the triggers end up with me eating God, Matt, God knows how much. I don't even remember. I can't actually remember. That's the thing, that's how I know there's a problem. Some people have addictions, right? Because I can't even remember these episodes where I ate 
more than what I should. All right, and it ended up with me gaining a lot of weight. And uh, by the end of lockdown, I couldn't bear to weigh myself. I didn't want to see as a number how much weight I'd put on. I didn't want to see it. And that's scale anxiety. That's your scale anxiety that I talked about earlier. So I looked up numberless weighing scale, a weighing scale that does not tell you your weight. I looked it up. Okay, so they didn't advertise it to me. It's something I come up with. I looked it up and there is one. Okay, you know, I think a lot of people are going to come up with that sort of you know, they're going to have that idea because the scale anxiety is such a bad thing. Trust me, if you don't understand it, you know, hopefully one day you never will. I hope you never understand it. But if you do understand it, you know, leave your comments down below. Let us know about the stuff that you struggle with. Anyway, this option came up and uh, I looked it up, looked it up. It looked good to me. I wanted to give it a go and I bought it. Now, the question is, has it worked for me? I would say yes, it has worked for me and no, it hasn't. And I'm going to tell you why now. Uh, first of all, why it doesn't work. I don't think that this shaper, right, as good as it is, right, I like it. As good as it is and I'll continue to use it. I don't think that it's given me the motivation to want to lose weight. But it's given me more confidence because I'm weighing myself every day, which I've never done before. It gets rid of my scale anxiety, which makes me feel good. And it congratulates me when I maintain my weight. And I think that's a really good thing. I like that a lot, to be honest, about this scale. But the thing is, right, this is the problem. I need to lose weight. Like, you can't tell me that maintaining weight is good. No, if I maintain my weight now, forever, I'm always gonna be overweight. And when I go into a age bracket, like when I'm in my 60s, if I make it that far, right? If I get into that age bracket, I'm gonna start having problems. So at some point, I need to lose the weight. I need the motivation to get that weight off me. And this scale isn't doing it for me. I'm telling you, it doesn't do it for me. It just makes me happy with being fat, basically. And um, the only way that I can see that I'm gonna lose that weight for good. So if maintaining is fine, I've proven over 130 days or whatever, I've proven that I can maintain weight but I need to find surges throughout the year every now and again where I'm losing five pounds ten pounds and then maintaining it and keeping it off I need to be able to do that so um, yeah you still need to find ways to motivate yourself to do a diet you have to you got you put the weight on you have to find a way to take that thing off you can't you can't keep stroking yourself there has to be a way there has to be a time when you're hard on yourself and say, I need to lose the weight now. It has to happen. This scale don't do it. It doesn't do it. You need a little bit of effort every now and again. Otherwise, you're just stuck in a limbo state forever until you die. You're always stuck in this state between, you know, feeling good about yourself and not feeling good about yourself. Have I lost weight with the shaper? Well, until I started Insanity, I had just maintained my weight. So I've, I can see on my phone, on my tablet, sorry, I can see that over the over time, I've had some gray days, I've had some blue days, but the vast majority of it has been green. I'd say 60 to 80% of the time, the, the color has been green, right? But now I've started Insanity, right? Which is actually working because I'm actually working hard on it and I'm eating you know, I've not, I've not changed my diet drastically, but I'm just monitoring what I'm watching a bit more. I'm not eating shit, basically, but I'm not doing the total opposite and eating the best stuff. I'm not eating like 50 different vegetables a day and, you know, tofu for lunch. I'm not doing stuff like that. I'm just eating normal meals. That's what I'm doing. The weight is now coming off and every day I'm weighing myself, it's blue, which is good, right? Until a month ago, no, I, I'd maintained my weight. Something clicked, I thought I had to lose weight, so now I'm doing that. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. about A little bit more about me. I've had problems with eating. I've had a lot of problems with eating in the past. Um, you know, I've, I've definitely got some sort of addiction problem or something like that. Um, there's this one occasion where, I've been very honest with you now, but um, there's this one occasion where I didn't eat a single bite. I didn't eat anything for 14 days, right? I thought for some reason it would be a good idea for me not to eat anything for 14 days. Now I lost a lot of weight, but I put it back on a year later. So yeah, that's why 
I would say that for me this scale is suitable. But if you don't fit into that category then maybe you don't need it. Which brings me to my final point. Who is the scale for? It's for people who don't want a number making them feel bad. It's for people who have low self-esteem about their weight. Okay, if you have low self-esteem, this is for you. It's for people who don't want a beach body, but they want to look healthy. They just want to look like a normal, healthy person. That This scale is for you. If you want six pack abs, eight pack abs, you know, 18, 19 inch biceps, this is not for you. It's for people who want to concentrate on more important things in life other than their weight. They don't want weight, 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 weight all over their head. They don't want diet, diet, diet. They don't want to think about that. They just want to concentrate on the important things of life, but they need to monitor their weight. It's for you. That's for you. And finally, it's for people who want to know what's going on with their body, but they have severe scale anxiety. And I fit into that category. And uh, if you fit into that category, I'd say something like this is good for you. That brings me to the end of the video. I know it was a long one, but I hope that it was of some value to you. Any questions, just put them down below. Let me know your questions. I'm happy to help always, especially with topics like this, because it's something I can relate to and it's something that a lot of people need a lot of help with. So um, yeah, if you like the video, please give us a like. It's a new channel. Give me a bit of support, please. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Any updates, I'll put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Did you like it? If you did, then please give us a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content. I'll see you next time.